And Justice Anthony Kennedy announced his plans to retire from the Supreme Court of the United States. Though he was a conservative, Kennedy provided key swing votes on rulings allowing same-sex marriage, abortion access, and affirmative action. His retirement will be effective July 31st, according to a letter Kennedy sent to President Donald Trump. Kennedy's retirement grants President Trump his second opportunity to nominate a Supreme Court justice. So for more on this, we'll go now to our political panel for the evening. We have civil rights attorney Robert Patillo and also conservative commentator Steve Malsberg. Gentlemen, good to see both of you. So as we know by now, Justice Kennedy announced his retirement set for the end of July. Uh, he's been a key swing vote in several decisions. He's usually uh, leans conservative. Robert, first over to you. You're an attorney. What does this mean for the future of justice in America? Well, I think there's been a little bit of hyperbole with regards to Justice Kennedy. With the retirement of Senator Day O'Connor, we thought Justice Kennedy would be the key swing vote on the court. But frankly, Justice Roberts has been more of a swing vote than Justice Kennedy uh, has been uh, in the last several years. It's going to remain a five to four Supreme Court on most issues with the conservatives having the advantage. And that's predicated upon uh, one of the conservative judges not having a change of heart like Justice Souter did in the past and then becoming more of a swing or or more of a moderate voice on the court. So I don't think it's going to be a massive sea change in the court, as many people are predicting. The doom and gloom out there isn't <laughs> quite going to happen. Now, if President Trump gets to a point four or five or six Supreme Court justices, <laughs> then at that point we may have some issues. Okay, good point. Point taken. Steve, your take on this upcoming vacancy. I'm very excited, and I do think it's going to solidify uh, a conservative court for, for many years to come. And I do believe that Trump will have a couple, at least one more, if not two more, uh, appointments uh, before he's uh, done. Uh, I, I think that uh, another justice in the image of Neil Gorsuch, from the list that the president put out, uh, while he was running for president, there's not many surprises. He said what he was going to do. He's done it. He's going to do it again. Uh, the Senate is going to pass him and, and approve him, notwithstanding the rhetoric from the left that uh, McConnell's being a hypocrite. And um, this is going to be great for the conservative cause, whether it's on, uh, you know, on, on uh, uh, affirmative action or whether it's on uh, religious liberty, freedom of speech, Second Amendment. This is going to solidify uh, so many causes for conservatives that they would have been really, if, if Hillary had won, those issues, the First and Second Amendment, would be on their way out. Now, Robert, what, what do you make of that? A lot of people are afraid that if Trump puts in another conservative justice, that all of the, the previous precedence is going to be thrown out the window. From your experience as an attorney, it doesn't seem like justices like to do that, do they? Well, justices have to rule on precedent. Very rarely do they overturn precedent regardless of their uh, conservative, liberal, or who appointed them. And frankly, let's understand, look, this court approved the Heller decision, which has banned the Second Amendment rights. They overturned, um, they supported religious liberty uh, very recently. They overturned union rights just this week. It was already a five to four conservative court. Uh, as I said, the only real change will be if President Trump gets to appoint several more justices, right. particularly if of Ruth, uh, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg or of uh, Justice Breyer retire in the upcoming term, that's when we're going to see a real sea change. But as of right now, the court's going to remain a conservative court, and Justice Roberts will slide over to being the swing justice, uh, as we saw in the Obamacare decision, where he voted in favor of supporting Obamacare. So that's going to be the outlaw of the court for at least the next two to four years. Now, Steve, you brought up Mitch McConnell. This being a midterm election year, should Congress now the Democrats hold off on confirmation of any Trump nominee until after November, after the elections. I mean, we saw that happen when with uh, with Merrick Garland, Garland, when President Obama, yeah. right, he was trying to put him up for this. Mitch McConnell seemed to be the obstructionist there. Well, he wasn't an obstructionist. He just took the Joe Biden rule. Uh, in 1992, when George H.W. Bush was president, uh, Joe Biden, uh, chairman of the Judiciary Committee, said, we will not have a vote on any Supreme Court nominee before the presidential election. So McConnell just did the same thing. He brought up uh, under Obama, when Obama was on his way out, the Biden rule. This isn't the Biden rule. This is a midterm election. No, you're not going to uh, forestall the, uh, the appointment of a Supreme Court nominee for a midterm election. It's the same president. He gets to appoint who he wants. So I, don't, I think it's apples and oranges, and the Democrats are really grasping at straws. <laughs> well, Robert, the, well, the President well, Obama had more than a year left when he tried to appoint uh, Merrick Garland. 
this is the problem when uh, the Senate starts making up rules and pulling them out of where the sun don't shine. The, the McConnell rule is a completely made up rule that has no place in the Constitution, has no place in the Senate record. Basically, he didn't want to give President Obama the right to appoint his justice. And remember, when they say this is a, uh, a, a congressional election, a midterm election, not a presidential election, we live in a constitutional system where we have three co-equal branches of government, meaning a midterm election is just as important as a presidential election. For that reason, there should be no vote following the McConnell rule. But when you make up rules off the top of your head just to suit your political purposes, right. that's when you hit, end up with the ripe hypocrisy like we have so right I, I now. Guess, I guess, Push this off I guess until nobody, after the midterms. I, I, I guess nobody heard the precedent that Joe Biden set in 92, and that's what McConnell cited in 2016. He didn't make it up, and well, it's not the McConnell rule. Well, then by, it was oh, the Biden rule. Well, then, by all means, follow that exact same rule right now and say we'll put another no, justice in doesn't apply. after the it, midterm not, election. It doesn't apply to midterm. And by the way, you have Harry Reid to thank for a 51-vote threshold for the Supreme Court justice. He got rid of the filibuster for judges. All right, gentlemen, i got to leave it right there. We're out of time. Thank you so much, as always, for a spirited talk tonight. Robert Patillo <laughs> and Steve Malzberg. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.